This is just a short run through video about how to use hashes in Ruby and the different sort of patterns they come up in. Okay, so let's get straight to this. So I've set up a little helper file to make this more obvious what's happening. Uh, often when these are printed out in the command line, it's in one great big straight line and it's not very easy to see what's going on. So uh, let's get to it. So on the right here, um, let's just see. So if we have this syntax here, so we can see we're relating to this hash, uh, but we're going to insert someone called Grant and let's say for argument's sake, this is ages. So if I save, okay, on the left here, you can see that that, that Grant's just been added into the file there. Okay. And actually, if we access Grant again, uh, let's just see what happens with that one. So you can see that it is uh, overrided the previous value. So you can see using the square brackets is the way to access the particular key. And then you assign it the value. Right. So let's just print this hash to start with. See what we're dealing with again. Do this one here. So we're saying accessing A plus equals one. So increment by one for A. There we go. So A is increased. We've got A again. Unsurprisingly, that's moved up to two. And I'll just work through these ones quickly so you can see just how that works. It's just updating another thing you can do to just update your keys there. What I've also got is accessing a key value. So now that we've got that, we've got here print of that hash. So let's see what happens there. Okay, so again, just highlighting access. That was the hash, same one again there. Um, access in C, there you go. That outputted the value for you of five. You can see there, that's five, okay? So we had assigning them earlier, and now you've got access in those. Specific keys. Okay, so let's just set that up, start with. Okay, so we've got another mirror image there. Check specific key. And let's print that. So we're after now specific key. So notice here it says access this hash with key um, A. So, oh, well, there we go. This seems a little bit different, doesn't it? So before you would have expected, you think, oh, okay. So does that access the key like we've had before? No. So this one is just something that you, you, you can use if you just want to know if the key exists. So you can see they're true or false. Okay. So let's remove that one and now introduce this one. Let's have a look. So this time we've got select. It's a way of iterating through, but this time notice that we've got key and value. Notice that value has got this little underscore here. It's just a convention that says we we're not using it, but we need it because you remember that these come as a key and a value. So there's two values coming in each time. So if we don't write key and value there as our variables, it will get confused. It's only the order that lets it know which one's which. So now we know the first one is the key. So accessing the key of English. Um, let's save this, see what we get. So a little bit different again, notice here. So the output this time, it has, with select, it has gone through that hash and just said which one has the key of, of English. So that's another interesting way you can access something fetch now this is an interesting one and i i forget about this one at times so let's uh clear the screen a little bit there parameters are or arguments are maths and nope we don't like maths okay interesting let's see what we get so that just is output four so what's the deal with it so oh right so let's figure that out so it says there fetch maths and so maths has a value of four and that's it it hasn't so we don't really get what this bit's doing. So let's get rid of that and do it with this one instead. So now we've got here fetch IT and it says, nope, we don't like IT. So let's save and see what this one does. Right. Okay. So different. So this time we actually get the message, nope, we don't like IT. So if we look up to the hash again, we can see there isn't a value of IT. So it's a little bit like key with a difference or oh, not with not with key like with access in a single one but this time it's got a potential error message that comes back as well and obviously i've gone for a text but you could you could choose to make that more useful to you this one so we've got one that says a list hash of keys now there's no question mark this time and no argument so let's just see what we get for this so a reminder that's the hash uh 
well, it's just giving us, notice this isn't a hash this time, that's giving you an array of the keys. So from your hash, you can use keys and it's going to give you an array of all the keys. If we clear that and we go for values, what we're going to get for this one. There we go. So again, the hash, but this time it's only the values that we've got out. So you can imagine sort of times when that would be useful to you. It's a very similar to some of the ones before, but we're now using the each function. Notice that underscore again, it doesn't really matter, but it's just highlighting that you're not using it. But this time we're going to manipulate the, um, manipulate the uh, values of the key. So notice I've got the hash. I access the key. So each key that goes through maths, English, science, that will go in there. So it'd be hash with maths, add two to that. So we've got maths, it's four currently, should go up by two. And you can imagine what the others are. So let's save this and see how that goes. You can double check there, four, 12, eight, six, 14, 10. Yes, so there you go. So they, that's how we could increment those with an each setup. So I'm still iterating over these ones, but this time I'm using the map function. So as we can see, what's going on is it says each time I'm now using a, sh a string, but I'm doing object literals to access those values. Okay, and I'm going to print those. Again, this one, because we're using map, it returns an array. So over here, you can see it's just a way to reformat what you've got. But again, some of you may have used map, but it's just highlighting how you need to do that with a hash. Notice you've got key and value because it's, of course, going to return a key and a value each time you're going to get two two parts so that's how you work with that you will run through an array and you will add those to your hash so every time the value comes up it will increment its value by one that's the plan so you can see i've got this format for a hash and i'll print the hash down here and let's save this and see what we get so we've got an error so it says here undefined method plus uh, for nil so what's going on here, if it's undefined method plus, at this point it's saying, so it says Ruby line 70, it's trying to add something to nil. So we've got a problem. So now, just to give you a heads up, when we get to JavaScript, you do have to do this a certain way. You can't get around this, but Ruby has this other special thing that we can do. You can see why this might happen. If something It's effectively saying something doesn't exist, add one. We could look at this and say, well, let's use a different sign tax. Let's use this one. Maybe there's something there. Well, let's save and see what happens this time. We get the same error. Okay. Oh, and notice Rubicop for me has formatted that back to being an object literal because they are the same thing. Now, some of you will have seen if I put zero in there and we go again, now it's managed to go through. So it says I've got seven A's, three B's, three C's and one D. It's gone through and counted those and added those to the list. So what did we do different? This zero here is a default value. And now this might make a little bit more sense. We had this thing and then it said uh, the error before, if I remember rightly, was un undefined method plus for, for nil. You can't You can't add something to nil. But having a default value of zero now means that every value has a default value of zero. But I want to show you how one, how this ends up being done in JavaScript effectively and the other way that you might end up seeing this done. If I highlight this part now and let's run through what's going on in this one. We've got an each loop still iterating over. Now we've done something different. So let's just work this out. So it says if hash of the letter well, if it just says hash of the letter, that's equivalent to saying this, okay? But you don't have to say that. If it exists, it is true. If it's true, then, and i.e. it exists, it, it's in there, it's in the hash there. So let's say it says A is one already, then increment it by one, increase it. But here's what the other part does now. It says else, it equals one. So if it doesn't exist, add it in there equal to one delete that so we've got the hash new now you will see rubucop for the, throw that back again but we've removed the default value so let's save but notice we didn't get an error this time we dealt with the problem so hopefully that gives you an insight into what's going on with hashes and 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 trying to figure out why why sometimes they break and and what's happening but this is a really important loop to try and learn okay to try and get this down because you'll use it so often to try and count up values 
obviously you can then we'll we'll have a look at one thing you can go on to try and access information about that beer find now you know how many bees there are found find out smallest largest whatever it is that it is you you need to do let's have a look so now notice this time now so we've got the hash and i'll keep it as as it is in fact we've printed it once this now says that same hash and because i've got this here it's going to reproduce that it says max by notice again remind yourself why is why is that there why is there that underscore see if you can remember so we've got key and value but it says max by and says value and now i'm going to print it says the largest value and there we go so it's important just you could probably guess you know max by value what was going to happen but it's important to know as well what you what output you're going to get so you can see yes it if we look up at the hash again then seven was the largest value and that was a but what's good is it's returned an array of that so now think if you if you did this you might then go on to say well actually largest value i want to know what is the key of the largest value so i will take the first one let's save that see how that differs now i've got a but if i did one here i just access straight away what the largest value was hopefully that's enough information there so you can see kind of how these are useful and well, i'll put this uh, up on github and post a link as well so I, I do think it's worth worth getting those last ones in hopefully that's useful to you